Hey everyone, we're going to go through for the final time how to plot graphs. This is going to be really quick and, and fast since we've done it a few times. So I have a graph here, uh, well table actually, um, that has current and voltage for a circuit. So my current starts from 0, goes up to 1.08. My voltage is 0.1 to 0.7. We've been asked to plot a graph of current versus voltage. Now from your notes, we did say from the very beginning that we always plot the y value or the y axis versus the x axis value. So from here, by comparing right, current versus voltage, we will see that your current is going to go on your y and your voltage is going to go on your x. This will never change, people. This is the standard for when we have to plot a graph. So the first thing we have to do is plot our graph. And to plot our graph, we need to develop our scale. So going down to find our appropriate scale, number one, you have to know how many double dark lines you have on your x and y axes. Now, we look at the graph soon. After that, you look at the largest value in your table for each axis. And you devise a suitable interval value while avoiding difficult numbers. Now, you have been mandated by CXE to avoid certain numbers in your graphs. Okay? So such things like 3, multiples of 3, 7, 11, things that are very difficult to divide by 10 or numbers that give you long repetitive decimals. That's, that's just not appropriate. Okay? We can get decimals, just not long recurring or very long decimal values. So, step number one. This one you all should know by heart by the time you finish doing graphs. So this is our graph. I've already checked it out. All right. Looks a bit um, light, a little dark on me. So what we do when we're doing such a graph Right? We count in every other dark line or every two dark lines. Now, why are we doing that? Again, let's go through again why we do that. Some graph books have um, every 10 small lines have a dark line. This is the dark line we're referring to that we're going to be using as our reference number. While most graph pages have a dark line every five small lines. It is up to you to check your graph and see what you have available. Right? If your graph has a dark line every 10 small lines, and that is the line that you're taking. Okay, it's not difficult to understand what number to take. Okay, so we're taking every other dark line so that we have 10 small lines to work with. Why 10 small lines? Because it's easy to divide by 10. You just move your decimal place one spot and you can divide by 10. All right? So what we're doing, we're checking, again, the number of double dark lines we have on our x-axis. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You have to remember that you have 9 on your x-axis. I'm not going to check the y, but standard graphs have 12 double dark lines on the y-axis. You have to remember this number. Even if you don't remember it, just know to count how many double dark lines you have to work with because this is the number you're going to have to share your values over. This is, these are the values that you have to spread your graph over. All right? So let's go back up, see what we have. So we know number one. We know the number of double dark lines we have both on our X and Y axes. Then we're going to look at the largest value in our table. So going up to our table, all right, so we have our X and Y values. So let's look at our X axis. They said that we're plotting current versus voltage. This is our Y, this is our X. So we know we have our X axis. We wanna come up with our scale for our X axis. We look at the largest value in our table. For that axis. All right, so you're going to get your largest value. This is a guide. This is not a 
you know, a written in stone formula. This is just a guy that I came up with when I was in form four, right? No one taught me this. I figured this out myself. So it's not like, you know, it's some big, huge, complicated design. Um, number of double dark lines. All right, now we're dealing with the x-axis. So we're going to have 0.7 and 9. We want to be able to divide our largest value that we're working with by the number of double dark lines that we have to get a comfortable value. Comfortable value being something that's not a whole bunch of decimal points in places. So 0 0.7 divided by 9 is 0 0.077. You all just know, no. So what do we do from here? We change a number we have to work with. We, there are two things you can do. You can choose to round up your largest value so that it's relatable to the 9. Or we can choose to decrease the 9 so that it's a number related to 0 0.7. Idle method is going to give you the same exact value. All right, I'm going through the two values. The easiest one here is to actually round up the 0 0.7. And we see if we round up the 0 0.7 to a number that's related to 9, I round up. Now, rounding up here doesn't mean to go to the very next number. This is where you have to know your multiplication tables pretty good. You have to know how to divide and multiply on the fly. Folks, this is why we learned our timetables in primary school, so that we know and see how to divide and multiply numbers very quickly. All right, so 0.9 divided by 9 is going to give us a very nice, neat 0.1. So what it says, every two dark lines will be equal to 0 0.1. So let's scroll down to our graph. So on our x-axis, all right, I've already draw, drawn all the lines here. So on every x, on the x-axis, every double dark line is 0.1. Very nice and simple to work with. All right, no need to go up all the way. So that's our x-axis. Let's go into the y-axis. Our y-axis now, same method applied. Okay, so what we're doing, we're going to take our largest value in the table and then we're going to divide by the number of lines we have available to us. So our largest number in the table is 1.08 and 12. Again, easily I can see I can round up the 1.08 to a number that's related to 12. I can round this up to 1.2. All right, and 12. And I get the same scale. It's just by chance I happen to get the same scale. All right, 1.2 divided by 12 is 0 0.1. Do not mix this up. I realize that you all are making very silly little mistakes. When you divide numbers, you have to know what to put on top and what to put below. All right, what to put in front of the divide button and what to put after it. Largest value divided by number of double dark lines. This line here means divide. A little short little tip. Ever notice a divide sign looks like this? Where we put one number here, a line that represents our divider, and this is our next value. That's why the divide button, well, actually not really, but that's a good way to remember what goes where. All right, the divide is basically a fraction. So please do it correctly. All right, this is not a mistake that you should be allowing to get too far. So I'm going to have every double dark line is equal to 0 0.1. We go into our graph, we plot our point ones. All right, I'm not going to plot all, you all can fill this out. All right, I've already put a little line. If you notice, I put little lines. Let's do that brighter. All right, I put the lines here. That's to indicate where you're plotting. You don't have to go and draw a line across here and then put your line. It's not necessary. It's not needed in the physics lab. All we just need for you to do is just to put a little line across here so that we know where your numbers are. 
Okay, that is one thing I will request of you because when students just put numbers randomly across the page, it gets annoying to read. Okay, remember you all only have one graph to read. We will have dozens of graphs to read. All right, or even worse yet, they are your examiner who is going to mark your lab and mark your graph exam would have marked hundreds of papers. Don't make it difficult for them. Just put a little line to indicate where you are putting your value. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So now I want to plot my graph. Okay, we're plotting our graph. Now we did say that um, voltage is on your X and current is on your Y. Okay, so our first value from the table, I'm not going to scroll back up to give us a little headache today. I'm just going to write it back over here. All right, so our first value for I and V are 0 0.0, 0 0.0. Oh, that's outside the recording. Space, hold on. All right, 0 0.1. I'm just doing the first few, and you all do the rest for your assignment. 0 0.14, 0 0.36, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So um, my y-axis is 0 0.0, which is 0, 0, and my x-axis is 0 0.1. Anytime you have a value that is 0, that means it's on the other axis. Right, because this origin here indicates that all my y values are zero along this, this line and along this line going up. Right, all my x values are zero. So where do we find our 0, 1, 0 0.1? This will be this point here. Please note when you're doing your plots, you need fine pencil point, a fine dark pencil point so that you're able to make very clean um, plots. Don't use a big fat pencil where you have no idea where your line is crossing. That is not appropriate. Similarly, to put dots, you're not allowed to put dots. You're supposed to put a small x. All right, you put a small x. That's actually too big of an x. All right, you put a small x and a dot with a circle. If you put a dot alone, you will not get your marks for plotting points when you do labs. This is a rule by CXE, and I do not waver from this because we're showing you it now. Okay, so get your small dot. So that is 0 0.1. Um, v is 0.2, Y is 0.14. So we can see V is 0.2 here. So that means we're going up this line, all right? Use a ruler if you get a little bit of vertigo or you get a little bit of confused looking at the lines. Uh, there's no shame in that. All right, so two is up this line, and then we have to look for the 0.14. Now, where is the 0.14? If you look here, this is 0.1, this is 0.2, and we have 10 small lines between them. So that means each one will give us 0 0.01. So this will be 0 0.11. 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, 0 0.2, 0.2.1, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, and so forth. All right, folks, it's just about counting. All right, so we're looking for 0.14. We know that's the fourth line because this is 0.1. 0.11234. So we're going to look to see where the 0.14 is, and we're going to read it across so that it intersects where the point 0.2 is. You put a small x where you're plotting your point. All right, so let's go on to the next one. I'm not going to count. We're just going to do it really quickly. 0.3 and 3.6. Well, 0.36. So this is the point 0.3. We're going up this line. All right, if I look across, I will see point three is here. So you know what? I'm going to start counting from this point. All right, at this point, it is point three on your y axis. All right, I want point three six. So point three one, two, three, four, five, six. And I get my point. 
All right, so that's the points for plotting the graph. Now, when you all have to go and plot your graph, you have to now do something called um, a best fit line. All right, now best fit lines, you do get a mark for doing it correctly. So please make sure and plot your graphs accurately when you're doing your labs because you get marks for all of these things. And considering we're going to be doing dozens of labs, well, no, dozens of graphs, there's no reason to not get our marks from this. All right, so folks, please take the time to do the graph. So our next one is um, point. 4 is 0.5. I can plot really quickly, right? So I'm just going to go through it really fast. 0 0.5 is 0 0.68. Um, 0.6 is 0 0.91. See, once you have the practice, you can do these really quickly because I remember where my line is. 0 0.7. You notice I'm keeping my cursor on the 0 0.7. So that's how I'm able to scroll up and not get too lost. And 1.0. Eight. So those are my points and my graph. We're going to have to scroll out a wee bit. Now I want to draw my best straight line through these points. We are not here to play dot to dot. We're not here to draw dot to dot where we take a line, we draw it like this. All right, you know, that is for primary school children. Do not, please, please, please do not do this nonsense this is absolute nonsense nobody's asking you to draw dot to dot lines in your physics labs do not do it i will mark up your book in a red marker this thing <laughs> all right so what we're going to do we're going to do something called a best fit line we draw in one line that um a comp that that take up most of our points it's not going to fit through all of your points because we live in a real world and not all our graphs are going to be perfect all right, so coming across here, why did I do that? All right, so I want to draw my straight line. So would you all please use a long clear ruler? That's a 30 centimeter ruler. If you're using a six inch long ruler, you are not going to get this out. And you're going to get problems in plotting your graphs. All right, now, if you end up getting problems in plotting your graph because you used a short ruler, I really cannot help you. All right, so make sure you use a thin, sharp, dark pencil point. You don't want to use a big, fat pencil like this. If you use a big, fat pencil like this, you're not going to see where your points are because you need to get a really crystal clear point of where your um, line is. So get a nice, dark line. Notice how the line changes. All right, don't get it too light where you can't see it. Now, let's see. All right, now there are rules for best fit line. Let's follow the rules. One. Pass, your line must pass through as many points as possible. And two, you must have equal spread. Equal spread means that the points that do not fit on your graph straddle both sides of the line, right? About equal amount. So let's just draw a little quick little one. So if I have a graph looking like this, all right? Okay, let's do brighter. All right, I have a graph looking like this. My line is there, and I have a whole bunch of lines, points on it, and then I have a bunch sitting down on one side. This is not a best fit because, yes, we got a lot of points on the line, but this graph did not describe best fit properly. If I wanted to describe this line properly, right, you go, you take your ruler, this is why you need a long, clear ruler, right? You draw your line across your points. All right, let me just get a line dot deep enough for you all to see. And you just kind of wiggle your line around so that you have, the, you have to satisfy the conditions for a best fit line. As in, you pass through as many points as possible, right? And you have equal spread. Now, if you look here, we kind of get in it because I am passing through, follow the cursor, one, two lines, and the points that don't fit on the graph, I have one, two, three, and on the next side, one, two, three. So that's good. 
All right, that's what we mean by best fit line. We have one, as many points as possible on the line. Two, you have equal spread. You cannot neglect one for the other. All right, so let's try this with this one. Um, if we look here, it's passing through one point. Let's follow the cursor. Okay, probably can't see the cursor. It's falling through one point. One point. Not quite. It's actually skimming the bottom of this X a little bit. It's skimming the top of this one. So it's not passing through any sorts of points. So what we're going to do, we're going to just wiggle this line around and see if we can get it passing through as many points as possible and creating equal spread. Now, once you have a long clear ruler, that will be easy to do. So let's see what we have here. I have one, one, two points on the line. And if we look here, I have one, two points on the left-hand side of my line. And I have one, two, um, three points on the right-hand side of my line. Now, two and three are basically equal because they're odd numbers. If they were even numbers, I'd fine. But two and three is fine. Not fine. Uh, it's acceptable for your plot. Now, there are numerous best fit lines in some graphs. All right, as an I could have adjusted this a wee bit more and chosen another line to go through. I could have used this one instead. And then I could have scooted this up or scoot this down a little bit. See the difference here? All right, I scooted it across a little bit. It's passing through three points, but all of the points that do not fit on the graph, <coughs> sorry, all the points that don't fit on the graph lie on one side of my line. That's not acceptable because you need to satisfy both conditions. All right, so this is why you need a clone clear ruler, get your graph, and you should be okay from there. So this is not our best straight line. Let's just take this back to a nice good spot. One, two, three. One, two, yeah, that'll work. All right, so we have our best straight line. Now, when you all are drawing your best straight line, please make sure your line goes straight across the page to the very edges of the page, right? Do not draw a line just from one point to another, something like this. Please don't. Draw your line straight across the page, right? So that you take up as much space as possible. So that's plotting our graph. I hope that's going to help you all in plotting your graph. You're going to go through gradients very quickly, even though you all said you mastered the gradient <laughs> technique. So our gradient formula is m, the symbol for gradient, is common m, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 are the coordinates of a point lower down in the graph, and x2, y2 is the coordinates of a point higher up. Rule of thumb, you take a point that's somewhere close to the bottom of the graph. Let's take a point somewhere close to the bottom of the graph. All right, choose somewhere close to the very bottom, and you go straight to the top. All right, as far up to the top as you can. And you look for a nice, comfortable point. Now, CXC does mandate that you do not use any of the points that came from your table. What are the points that came from your table? You see these points here that you plotted? These points you are forbidden to use to calculate your gradient because they're trying to get you to use various skills. When you plot points, that is plotting points, when you're doing gradient calculation, we want you to be able to read points. So it's two different skills that we're testing. All right, so please, I will know when you all use table values, I will see it. And we want to choose a value now on our line itself. What is the line? This. This is the line that we drew. You want to choose a point on this line. You do not want to go and choose a point somewhere out in space. You don't want that. You don't want this one. What is that? That is not on the line. I do not want to see you all choosing points randomly out in space. We want values from this line. 
All right, that is where we are taking all our readings from. So I want a nice, comfortable value. What do I mean by nice, comfortable value? Our line passes through an exact X and Y value. And it's not passing kind of, you know, midway or three-quarter way or something. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit more, if it can. And you'll see what I'm speaking about. You see here how it's passing? Yes, it's passing through an exact Y, but it's midway between two points here. That's not a good spot, though. You look for one that's closer um, to passing through a really good point. Now, sometimes it takes a little, a little bit of practice, and you probably have to look a little further than where you want it to. So let's take a look. Um, no, uh, it's a little bit below the juncture. No, still a little bit. This one is a little bit to the top. Do you see that? All right, no, 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 <laughs> no. Ah, all right, and if you look here, Okay, so where are you? If you look here, we actually do get a very nice spot right here. We put a dot in a circle to indicate this is what we're going to use for our gradient. So we're going to use this as our first gradient point. You read down for the x-axis and you read across for the y value. So let's see what we have. Take a ruler. All right, I want to read my x value. All right. Remember we said every small line is a 0 0.01. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 6, 7, 8. So this is 0 0.18. And let's read across to get our y-axis value. It's our first point above the point 0.1. We can see that already. All right? And we know each one here is 0 0.01. So this is going to be 0 0.11. Yes, you can see it very wrong in your mind, point 11. You're pretty please, don't do that. There's no such thing as point, point 11. So my x1 is point zero, is point 0.18. My y1 is point 0.11. Let's put in our values, 0 0.18, 0 0.11, with a comma in between. Now let's go back up and look for a y-axis value. This is going to be a little harder to see because... Um, it's a big graph page. But I'm just going to use this as an example and I'll pull out the value for you. All right, now we, the appropriate point is staring us in the face. All right, we can look and see, well, yeah, this look, this look good. We passed on exact X and Y, but I actually won't take that for me because when you zoom in, you want to realize it's just a little bit to the right of the proper point. But if I were you, I would use this as a point. That's fine. Um, this is actually a far better point to use. This one here. Look at them properly. All right. Now again, it takes practice. And at a certain eye to realize, you know, one point is better than the next. All right. But let's look and see which points are good. I can take this one. Take this one. Um, this one, you can see it's a little bit above the junction, so that's not really too good. This one, too, is a little bit above. Uh, let's go up. This is fine. Yeah, I could get away with that. So you see, you get your choice of spots to use. Some graphs don't have many spots. Some graphs do. Try to take a point somewhere to the very top of the graph. You see, I didn't even look at my point. I just chose a spot where you're supposed to take your graph point. Um, so let me just take this one here. Zoom out. I think that is um, point, 1.2 and 0.75. All right, so this is... <laughs> Zero point seven five. Okay, let's zoom back in. It's too far away. Point seven five and comma one point two. I realize students do mix up which value goes where. Please follow this. There are two ways you can do this. Some students do it this way. X one is the first number, and Y one is the second number. And they could go here, x2 is the first, y2 is the second. Or 
you can do it this way. You can just take your pencil, write down, you know what? These are my X values, these are my Y values. Because look, X is here, Y is here. So this will be your X1, Y1, this will be your X2, Y2. So my formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2 is 1.2 minus Y1, which is 0.11. X2 is 0.75 minus X1, which is 0.18. People, please learn the layout of these things. Do not come and say, Miss, you know what? I could say 0.18 minus 0.11 over 0 0.75 minus 1.2. No, no, that's just nonsense. All right, so please look at what you're doing when you're doing these things. All right, so do your calculations, work out your numerator first, then work out your denominator and get your answer. All right, so hopefully, folks, that's going to help with the graphs. Um, good luck with the rest. And I will see, hopefully I see your experiment, not experiment, your assignment in later today.